Hello, this is Adam Fisher with ExploreFinancialFreedom.com. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to uh, continue to check out our videos. We try to put it, uh, multiple videos out a week. Um, I am really trying to get this message out to as many people as possible. So if you could hit the like button and subscribe, that would help us really begin to get this message out to more people. So please don't forget to hit the like button. Even leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, good and bad criticism is always welcome. So uh, today I want to talk about the Great Reset. And I really want to hit a few things. One, I want to talk about what is the Great Reset? Why do we need a reset? How does the reset impact us? And then I want to talk more about this idea of decentralization and centralization, and then what I think the future holds. So these are going to be some of the things I'm talking about. This is going to be a longer vlog than I usually do, uh, but I really want to get this message out uh, and help people understand the Great Reset because I've been getting a lot of questions about it. So um, first, what is the Great Reset? So um, I find it really funny and actually laughable when some people say there is no such thing as a Great Reset because people have been talking about the Great Reset for a couple years now. Uh, there are sources that you can go to the sources and you can see for yourself that it is a legit conversation. It is a legitimate conversation and people are talking. They're using the terminology, the need for a Great Reset. Um, even the World Economic Forum Chief Executive Officer Klaus Schwab described in his own words what the Great Reset is about. And he gave really three elements of what he sees the Great Reset being. Number one, he sees it involving a stakeholder economy. I'm going to say that again. The first one, the first component is creating conditions, is creating a stakeholder economy. The second thing is, the second component that Klaus Schwab talked about was building a more resilient, equitable, and sustainable way based on environment, social governance matrix. Interesting. That's an interesting one. And then the third component is to harness the innovation of the fourth industrial revolution for public good. Now, that is in his own words what he's describing in general what the Great Reset is all about. And so the Great Reset, first and foremost, I want to I want to say this. Resets are not always a bad thing. You know, some people think of the Great Reset as a positive. Some people think about it as a negative. But wherever you are on the spectrum of positive and negative, I want, I want, I really want you to know that it's not all good. It's not all bad. Resets by nature can be a very good thing. Um, but what is the goal of this reset? Why would people want a great reset? Well, first and foremost, the current system, and I'm going to focus here right now just on uh, financial system, the financial system, the fiat system. Fiat just means really fake money. It's not backed by anything. If you've watched some of my past videos, you know uh, that for years, centuries, money was based on gold. Uh, in 1944, there was the Bretton Woods Agreement, and all the countries in the world came together and said, we're going to back, we're going to have a world reserve currency backed on the gold standard. Gold is going to be what backs the currency, and the U.S. dollar was the world's reserve currency. In 1971, President Nixon pretty much defaulted on the agreement and said, I am not going, meaning the U.S. is not going to honor our U.S. dollars on gold anymore. And so, in many ways, I would argue that was maybe a second mini-reset, because before, the monetary system was based on gold. Now it is based 
100% completely on a fiat system. And what are we seeing? We are seeing the downfall of the fiat system. The system is out of control and it's, it is literally blowing up before our very, our very own eyes. And so in many ways, I think the reset is already underway. We can see the elites pushing a stakeholder economy. Look at Canada, for example. Canada is seizing people's money for donating it to the trucker convoy. Look at the Green New Deal. Uh, this is a push for sustainability, energy, sustainability. These are just a couple examples of how we are, they are already pushing for a reset. So how does this impact us? Well, we're already seeing two camps form. We're seeing two sides. We have a choice. The choice is one, go along, two, object. We can either go along or we can object. And we are seeing sides form and people are picking between the two. You can either object to the fiat system, the centralized system, or you can go along with it. And the people objecting are now looking and going, you know what, we want a more decentralized system. And so what we're really beginning to see is I would argue a war between decentralization and centralization. And so the Great Reset, I would actually argue both sides want a reset. Now, maybe there's a third group. Maybe there's a third group that doesn't want any reset. They want everything to stay the same. But I think the two prominent sides are they realize things need to change because the fiat currency system is dying. It's exploding. It's blowing up. It's out of control. But you got some people going, we need to further centralize. We need to further centralize the system to create a better future. You got others going, we need to decentralize. We need to decentralize the system and we need to put the power back in the hands of people instead of the hands of a few governments, corporations, etc. And so you really have a war going on. The war is being fought over decentralization versus centralization. Our financial system hangs in the balance between these two. The centralized powers are moving. Now this is what's interesting. I want to I really want to hit on this. The centralized powers are moving back to a commodity system. It's subtle. You know, they're still printing money. They're still printing money. But if you look between 2008 to now, you are seeing more and more nation states buying gold than they ever have in recent history. You can look from the 1940s on until about 2008, the, the amount of gold they were buying was going down. After 2008, they started buying more gold again. More and more um, nations are looking at um, resources, energy. They need, they need more of a commodity-based system. And so I would argue the centralized powers are really starting to push commodities again, but they're pushing gold. They're pushing natural resources. This is what they're pushing. The decentralized group is pushing for Bitcoin. They're pushing for a decentralized digital asset that cannot be controlled by nations and corporations. Um, the decentralized movement is fighting to reclaim the people's money, which is Bitcoin. So what is the future? What does the future um, look like? So the next decade, I think, is going to be very rough. I think the next decade we are gonna see a war breakout like never before. And it's gonna be, like I said, the war against decentralization and centralization. Changes are happening so fast. It's time to move just as quickly. If you want financial freedom, you gotta move just as quickly because everything is changing so fast. I think the decentralized movement will win out. Why? Because I think Bitcoin has exponential growth and I don't think the centralized powers understand it, and I think they underestimate it, and they can't stop it. They will try, 
but they can't stop it. And so I think the future is bright. I think you're going to see more and more decentralization. I think Bitcoin is on the rise. And I think we will see a reset, but I don't think it's the reset Carl, Klaus Schwab and his colleagues at the economic, the World Economic Forum think it's going to be. Uh, they might have their pockets of that, but I think we're going to see a more decentralized world than we have possibly in recent history. So if you would like to learn more about this and other topics, please check out our website, www.explorefinancialfreedom.com. We're constantly putting free resources out there to help people explore how to find financial freedom. We exist to see people live free, and we want to help you have monetary sovereignty and financial freedom. So if you'd like to learn more about Explore Financial Freedom, please go to our website, explorefinancialfreedom.com, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe as we're constantly putting new videos out. Thanks for watching today's vlog.